following program is rated TV MALV. It contains strong language and violence. It is intended only for mature audiences. Some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Does your church have what it takes to protect its parishioners? Is it proactive or reactive? Still don't think your church needs security? Take a look at this. However, without sounding like an alarmist, the number of church crimes of all types have leveled off at approximately 23,000 per year for the past 10 years, trending downward. The number of violent crimes have leveled off at around 1,600 per year, trending upwards of only 13% for the past 10 years. Mass shootings in the last 10 years have gone up two and a half times since 2014. April 15th, 1999. A mass shooting occurred at Wedgwood Baptist Church in Fort Worth, Texas. 47-year-old Larry Jean Ashbrook entered during a See You at the Pole rally featuring a concert by the Christian rock group 40 Days when he killed seven people and wounded eight others before committing suicide. March 18, 2001 Former minister Frederick Bradford, 35, stood up during a revival service at Greater Oak Missionary Baptist Church in Hopskinville, Kentucky, and shot his estranged wife and another woman. March 12, 2005. Terry Ratzman walked into his church meeting carrying a 9mm handgun and began shooting. Terry killed seven members of his church before taking his own life including the pastor, Randy Gregory, and his 17-year-old son. May 21st, 2006. Anthony Bell, 25, opened fire inside the ministry of Jesus Christ Church here during a Sunday morning service, killing four in-laws and wounding another before kidnapping his wife and killing her. December the 9th. 2007. Five people were killed and five wounded as a gunman, Matthew John Murray, went on a shooting spree at youth with a mission near Denver and then New Life Church in Colorado Springs. May 3rd, 2012. A homeless man killed himself after fatally shooting a priest and a church secretary at St. Peter's Episcopal Church in Elliott City, Maryland. Police said Douglas Franklin Jones had been turned away from the church food bank about two weeks earlier for visiting every day instead of weekly. May 9th, 2012. Joseph Lewis Jr., 84, was fatally shot while sitting in a car guarding Victory Way Assembly Church of God in Christ in Detroit, Michigan. Two teenagers, 15-year-old Anthony Williams and 18-year-old Alandre Boone, attacked him while a Bible study took place inside. Police suspected robbery was the motive. Both teenagers were tried and convicted as adults for second-degree murder. August the 5th, 2012. Six members of the Sheik Temple of Wisconsin and Oak Creek were fatally shot by a white supremacist, Wade Michael Page. Page was shot by a responding officer and later killed himself. October 24, 2012. A former facilities maintenance employee at World Changers Church International in College Park, Georgia, opened fire killing church volunteer Greg McDowell, 39, while he was leading a prayer. Police arrested Floyd Palmer, 51, who was found guilty but mentally ill and sentenced to life in prison. December the 2nd, 2012. Elementary school music teacher Gregory Aldridge, 52, shot his ex-wife Darlene Sittler while she played the organ during a church service at the First United Presbyterian Church 
and Calder Sport, Pennsylvania. March 31st, 2013. A 28-year-old man fatally shot his father during Easter services at the Hiawatha Church of God in Christ in Ashtabula, Ohio. Rashid Riddle then made a rambling statement at the pulpit while yelling about God and Allah, still holding his handgun as panic worshippers fled the church. April 13th, 2014. Neo-Nazi and former Ku Klux Klan leader Frazier Miller Jr. fatally shot Dr. William Corporan and his 14-year-old grandson Reed Underwood outside a Jewish center in Overland Park, Kansas as they arrived for a community event. He then drove to a Jewish retirement community where he fatally shot Terry Lamano, who was visiting her mother. June 17, 2015. Nine black worshippers, including a pastor, was killed by Dylan Roof, a 21-year-old white supremacist. After he prayed with them for nearly an hour, the shooting happened at historic Emmanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in downtown Charleston, South Carolina. Roof was convicted of federal hate crime and obstruction of religion charges and sentenced to death. February 28th. 2016. Reverend William B. Schooler, 70, was fatally shot by his 68-year-old brother inside an office at St. Peter's Missionary Baptist Church in Dayton, Ohio, as Sunday services were winding down. Daniel Schooler was found guilty of murder and sentenced to 31 years to life in prison. April 24th, 2016. Mark Storms fatally shot 27-year-old Robert Braxton III during Sunday services in a suburban Philadelphia church. Storms, 46, argued self-defense but was sentenced to 10 to 20 years in prison for voluntary manslaughter. August 9th, 2016. A shooting during a party at a Jersey City, New Jersey church left 17-year-old Leander Williams dead and two teenage girls wounded. Daquan Jackson, 18, was charged with murder. September 24, 2017. Emmanuel Kadigger Sampson, 25, was charged with killing a woman and wounding six other people with gunshots at Burnett Chapel Church of Christ in Nashville, Tennessee. November the 5th, 2017. Manuel Garcia, 64, gunned down his ex-wife and her new boyfriend in the parking lot of St. Alfonso Church in Fresno, California. The suspect was found dead of an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. November the 5th, 2017. At the First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs, Texas, a local man, Devin Kelly, shot and killed 26 people and wounded 22 others. Kelly was shot and wounded by another local resident, then killed himself after a car chase. It is the deadliest mass shooting in Texas history and the deadliest at an American place of worship, surpassing the Charleston Church shooting of 2015. December 29th, 2019. A gunman opened fire in West Freeway Church of Christ, White Settlement, Texas on Sunday, killing two people and injuring others before two heroic congregants shot and killed him at the scene. February 21st, 2020. True Cornerstone Church pastor Derek Gandy and his wife Kula say after service, Alabama pastor Ulysses Woodard, 44, allegedly got into an argument with his wife. Things escalated, and they say Woodard pulled out a gun and shot her. Woodard then took police on a chase before shooting himself and crashing into the church. February 28, 2022. 
A father fatally shot his three daughters, 9, 10, and 13, and one other person in a Sacramento church, Sacramento, California. The fourth victim was supervising the 39-year-old father's visit with his daughters before killing himself. By the time first responders arrived on the scene, all four victims in the gunmen were dead in a room in the main sanctuary. May 15, 2022. A shooter killed one person and wounded five others at the Taiwanese Presbyterian Church in Laguna Woods, California. The suspect, 68-year-old David Chow of Las Vegas, was arrested at the scene. Authorities allege that the crime was committed out of political hatred of Taiwan. June 17, 2022. A 70-year-old man, Robert Finlay, shot dead three senior citizens at an Alabama church group's meeting Thursday evening, was subdued by someone else at the event until police arrived, authorities said Friday. March 27, 2023, a mass shooting occurred at the Covenant School, a Presbyterian church in America's parochial elementary school in the Green Hills neighborhood of Nashville, Tennessee, when 28-year-old Aiden Hell, a transgender man and former student of the school, killed three nine-year-old children and three adults before being shot and killed by two Metropolitan Nashville Police Department officers. February the 11th, 2024. Janice Marino, who has utilized both male and female names, went into the Joel Osteen's Lakewood Church, Houston, Texas, armed with a rifle. She had her seven-year-old son with her. After she began shooting, two off-duty officers returned fire and she was pronounced deceased at the scene. The child got caught in the exchange of gunfire and was struck in the head. He is in critical condition. A 57-year-old man was also shot in the leg. That was just a few examples of why a church assembly must have security and safety protocols in place during an active shooter or shooter's threat or response. Listen to this dialogue between Jesus Christ and his disciples if you need more persuasion. Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. And these are the beginning of sorrows. And many false prophets shall arise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, 
until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. And what were the days of Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah like? The people of those inhabitants did what was in their minds and hearts with no regard to holiness and righteousness. Their social acts were of all kinds of sexual immorality and impurities, including pride, apathy, complacency, idleness, and unconcern for the underprivileged, idolatry, worship of oneself, and pagan practices was legislated as common law and practice. Behold, this was the guilt of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters had pride, excess of food, and prosperous ease, but did not aid the poor and needy. They were haughty and did an abomination before me, so I removed them when I saw it. But before they laid down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, both young and old, all the people of the last man surrounded the house, and they called to Lot, where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us that we may know them. Lot went out to the men at the entrance, shut the door. And what were the days of Noah like? The Lord saw how great the wickedness of the human race had become on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of the human heart was only evil all the time. Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight and was full of violence. God saw how corrupt the earth had become, for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways. Jesus Christ said, the inhabitants of both Noah and Lot's day went on about their daily lives as usual, without any regard to the preaching and warnings of God by his people in his impending wrath and judgment to come. However, much like Noah, Lot and their families, having to survive within those societies, the frequency and intensity of increased violence and evil practices we find ourselves, as Christians today, living among the same generation of sins and sinners, having a greater need to protect, watch, and pray one for another as we see his day approaching. We as Christians must face the fact and the reality that we are living in the last days and the wisdom and discernment of God is seen in the obedience and operation of his Holy Spirit. The forces of evil that are against us are both internal as well as external. Just as the men of Noah came against him and his family and the men of Sodom came against the angels of God, so are the evil men and women of this generation coming against us as Christians. Crime and violence are on the rise in some states and cities and we must be both defensive and offensively guarded especially from those who reject our message and messengers and come with an agenda to steal, kill, and destroy the gospel and the only way of salvation through grace by faith in Jesus Christ. Our resources, spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, and as aggressively as collecting tithing and offerings should be taken into account with regard to human life with a proactive outline and sufficient outcome for all our edifice and places of worship, including surrounding areas but not limited to fixed locations. By putting in place safeguard protective security measures that will minimize if not neutralize the negative impact caused by acts of sin and intentional objective aggressions. Notwithstanding the Holy Scriptures, we should protect and remind the church through the power of His Holy Spirit and the wisdom of the Word of God that is given to us as Christians.
Greater is he that is within you than he that is in the world. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And I will never leave you nor forsake you. But I am with you unto the ends of the world. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. My final thoughts and a request for prayer. I know this wasn't a typical video that you were interested in watching. However, it was of great importance. What we learned from both ancient and modern history is that Christians are not immune to tests, trials, temptations, disappointments, despair, failures, sickness, hurt, harm, danger, persecutions, and even death by natural cause, or martyrdom, or even worse, murder. There is no get out of earth card welcome into heaven, at least not without any of the above forementioned. It would be great to live to a hundred years old and have never seen the inside of a hospital bed or a doctor's office and die peacefully in bed. Few have, but many will not. However, unlike the world who live and die without hope, Christians have the Holy Spirit of God living within them every day of their lives and are given hope, promises, and the seal of redemption, and are told when we die, we are blessed. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. You might say, if that's the case, why even try to preserve life? Because God, through Jesus Christ, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, says to occupy until He, Jesus Christ, returns. And there is much work to be done. So let us be both mindful and vigilant and continue to work as well as pray for the lost and for each other. If you see something, say something. Be both proactive and reactive, spiritually and naturally, helping those who may be going through a mental or psychological crisis and cannot cope in or manage their anger or communicate verbally. In closing, let us pray for those who have lost loved ones to violent crimes and are still dealing with bereavement, and that God, through Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, will continue to heal their broken hearts and save as such for the kingdom of heaven. Be encouraged in the Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank you for watching, and may God, through Jesus Christ, both bless and keep you and yours safe, now and forever. Amen.